Hey gang, a little frosty today. It's uh, about 3.15 in the afternoon and uh, we're getting ready to have our little Christmas work party. So everyone's kind of taken off early. So I've come home and you know, I'm not gonna have a nap, not gonna rest. I'm gonna feed you goodness. So here's what I'm gonna feed you. We're gonna talk a little bit about a couple of the cool uh, game mechanics in Dead Reckoning uh, from Tiny Battles. It's a Herman Lutman design. Uh, Herman uh, was really nice and sent me this game. I had a chance to play it. And, uh, you know, it's a zombie game, right? So me, I'm not a zombie game player. Though I like zombie ideas and I like the you know, the theme, it's kind of cool. I'm not a Walking Dead guy. If you're a Walking Dead guy, you'll probably love this game. Uh, let's just have, I want to talk to you about two key things that kind of define, for me, define the game. Uh, I'm not going to go in all the different pieces and all that sort of stuff. Someone said, hey, tell me what other pieces mean. Okay, Devin, well, I'm not going to do that. Buy the game, son. Uh, no, it's really, it's really simple. There's uh, hordes of zombies mobs of zombies and packs of zombies and uh, I think the counters have H's and M's and P's or something on them, I don't know. Um, excuse me, it's freaking cold here for me anyway. And uh, <clears throat> so that's what the P on the on the counters is and then there's an L and a W and that's just, you know, there's a weapons type and a uh, speed at which they move. A w being walk of course, I'll show you a couple of counters. It's, you can go see the videos online. I mean, I, I did a, a, a video and it's upside down. I did a video on these guys anyway, but uh, I didn't talk through what all the different bits meant, meant, meant because I hadn't played yet and it was a shrink rip. So, hexes, counters, terrain, tactical, move and shoot, move and melee type of game. What's unique about that, what's different, he, there's two things. First of all, let me just find, uh, I kind of just threw all the cards together when I was finished here. So I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna grab that guy, and uh, I'm gonna grab that guy, and I'm gonna grab bop, 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 that guy. And then let's find some initiative cards. Where are they? Hello, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> oh, that's a sucky one to start with. Let's do that, and let's do this. Uh, nope. Let's do this. Nope, that doesn't look very fun. Let's do this. Here we go. Bear with me, I'm almost here. Okay, so each turn has a number of initiative cards that you're dealt. Yes, is that right? Ish, something like that. Yes. And uh, each turn has a series of rounds, and uh, for each round, you play an initiative card. So uh, you, you, uh, play a three means you're going to get to do three actions in a turn, you play a four, you can do four actions in a turn, and they well, that's pretty standard and pretty boring. Ah, eh, wait, wait, wait. This guy had more, he goes first. So what, you say? But, let's say he had a five. Five minus three is two. He gets to conduct two actions before the other guy gets to do anything. Not a big you know, thing, but it's cool because you, you're getting a preempt. So you could choose out of your hand of six cards, which might be a five, a three, a four, a one, or two ones, or two twos, or two fours, whatever it may be. You've got to choose when you're going to be doing stuff, knowing that the other guy is also going to be trying to play his cards at a certain time to obtain his advantage and get two attacks on you or two moves ahead of you or whatever the case may be. So that adds a little tension and decision-making dynamic, which I like. So there's the first thing. Now, I'm not gonna go into how the game plays and all that sort of stuff. I mean, uh, Herman can send the game to Marco and Marco can play it and, and everyone can go gaga about it. I'm just gonna tell you a couple of two things that I like about the game. And, <clears throat> and here's the, so that was the first thing. <laughs> It's windily done. And the second thing that I like about the game, besides the artwork and the counters and the um, the map and stuff, uh, combat is resolved uniquely. And I think this type of combat model, which I have no idea how you come up with how this works and is balanced, it's amazing. But, oh, it's amazing for me, all right? Uh, so you may just go, whatever. Uh, let's say we get a situation where there's either a ranged fire or there's a melee, okay? 
uh, what happens is both sides pull a card. They pull a combat card and they flip it over and they go, ah, look what I got. And then you look at the results and you'll see that if it's a fire combat top in the, in the top there or close combat attack or close combat defense, right? And then this guy has the same set of things and you match them up. And that's going to determine what happens with the attack. So there's no die. There's no die rolling, number one. Uh, number two, uh, it, it's going to depend on the type of unit you have and what type of weapon they have, whether it's to whether or not you inflict any damage or you might have damage inflicted upon you. Uh, so particularly in close combat, uh, there's all sorts of permutations and combinations there. I'll let you just have a look at that, right? And hopefully that's not reversed for you, and, uh, and maybe it's in focus or not. So anyway, I thought those that combat resolution uh, mechanic or rule, and the um, the initiative rules were very clever. The game is basically, and I the concept of the game is, you're on a you're you're trying to escape from the zombies, and you're going to get all the VIPs off the map, and so you get some. Uh, uh, military forces and some militia and some civilians and some VIPs and they all have a random amount of victory points that they're worth and you got to get them off the map and the mo zombies come from one end of the map and from the side and so there's some other choices there in terms of tactics for the op the opposing player it's a two-player game uh, that uh, you know when you start bringing units in from the side to try and cut off uh, the bad guys, or the good guys, as the case may be, the real people versus the zombies. So, <clears throat> uh, it's a it's a compact game. It's single map. I, you can go look at the shrimp group to see what the map looks like. You get this uh, two decks of cards. So there's an initiative deck and a combat uh, combat deck. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it's kind of sniffly here. And then you know there's this bag of counters that once you punch them all out, they all uh, they're in pretty neat shape. And the uh, there's a number of other little icons on the counters that represent different things uh, in terms of their uh, influence uh, to fear and things like that. And we're not going to get into all that because all that's cool and it's zombie stuff and it's cool and it all works. Uh, but I just wanted to share with you those two uh, unique or, or interesting features, probably not unique, but interesting features that uh, I discovered with that game. So... You can check it out on Tiny Battles Publishing. The, it's a print-on-demand uh, uh, company. You'll uh, be impressed with the quality of the counters, generally speaking, and the map artwork is very nice. And I hope you, uh, and the rules are pretty straightforward. The rules are eight or 10 pages. It's got a couple of charts that come with it. This, you can play the game off these things. I really don't need, uh, in fact, if I had have been smart, I could have looked at the counters and told you what all the different things have meant here because it has the size ratings and the different types of assaults that uh, can happen and the different actions that can happen in the turn and things like that. But we're not going to get into all that right now. So have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. All the best.